So, this is how you leave me. Sorry. Welcome to Watch Mojo. And today we're counting down our picks for the top 20 worst things Stewie Griffin has ever done. Yeah, well, um, here's a suggestion. Um, have the money by tomorrow and there won't be any problems. For this list, we'll be looking at the most violent, reprehensible, and evil actions that have been carried out by the youngest member of the Griffin household. Did any of these scenes make you squirm? Let us know in the comments below. Number 20. Putting Chris Under Mind Control Stewie Griffin is quite the little genius, and he's often tinkering with elaborate toys and devices. In Season 2's The Story on Page 1, he creates a mind control machine that he proceeds to use on Chris. If you're blue and you don't know where to go to, why don't you go where fashion sits? Putting on the reds! <laughs> Not my bit, but still funny. Taking away his older brother's agency and putting him under his own control is certainly deplorable, but it goes even further. You see, Stewie manipulates Chris and attempts to use his older brother's stature and strength to, you guessed it, attempt matricide. This whole scheme is running afoul of some serious felonies, not to mention the moral toll success would have taken. Luckily for both Lois and Chris, the device short circuits when Chris gets too close to the microwave. Number 19. Taking Brian's Car for a Joyride Stewie is very excitable, and he likes having fun. But sometimes that fun clashes with other people's valuable belongings. After Brian picks up Stewie from a play date, he also lets him stay in the car a little longer so Stewie can finish listening to Carrie Underwood. Brian, I'm just going to sit in the car till the song's over. All right, but don't take too long. It'll drain the battery. Oh, shut up. It's not draining the battery. The latter accidentally puts the car in drive, and while he stops it before anything bad can happen, the incident plants a horrible idea in his mind. Heeding the call of adventure, Stewie decides to steal Brian's car and takes it for a joyride through Quahog. Unsurprisingly, Stewie ends up totaling the vehicle when he smashes into a pole. Brian is none too happy about it, and for good reason. Look at this! Do you know anything about this? A about what? About what a beautiful date? Oh my god, that is surprising! Number 18. The Lemonade Stand Incident this joke was originally seen in Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story, a direct-to-video movie that was later split into three episodes. Stewie tries selling lemonade in front of the house, but no one gives him the time of day. Hey, Prego! Prego! Hey! Hey, I'm talking to you, Tubby! Oh, don't you ignore me! Ooh! Fed up with the lack of attention and money, Stewie assaults a passerby with a baseball bat. After knocking the man out with a blow to the head, Stewie raids his wallet and steals $6. Dad insult to literal injury, Stewie proceeds to dump a cup of lemonade over the man's unconscious body. Don't forget your lemonade. This adorable business venture went from zero to a hundred real quick. Number 17. The Motel Transaction in this classic episode, Brian volunteers to pick up Stewie from Palm Springs and bring him back home. In traditional Family Guy fashion, many shenanigans ensue. Where, where are the bags? What the deuce do you mean, where are the bags? They're right here. Rupert, I tell you to watch the bags! Also, in traditional Family Guy fashion, at least one of these shenanigans results in a death. While staying at a shoddy motel, Stewie overhears an illicit transaction in the next room. Unable to sleep with the noise, he yells to the wall and informs the seller that the buyer is wearing a wire. We fear a man, or baby who would end a man's life to get a night's rest. And actually get the night's rest after it's done. He's wearing a wire! What? You son of a- <sighs> Number 16. His Suggestion in the Bank Vault This standout bottle episode sees Brian and Stewie get trapped inside a bank vault. Did you... did you just crap your diaper? I got scared when the door closed. In a break from the traditional Family Guy formula, the episode is mostly played straight, with only a small number of humorous scenes. But when the humor does arrive, it arrives hard and gross. Scared at the prospect of being trapped, Stewie's stomach grows upset and he dirties his diaper. He then becomes worried that he's going to get a diaper rash. So he attempts to coerce Brian into, well, 
Just watch the clip. I don't want any trouble. There's not going to be any trouble as long as you eat my poo. That's not happening. Well, then I'll be forced to shoot you. It doesn't work at first, but Brian eventually hits Stewie and cleans his diaper by way of apology. It's disgusting, and the scene resulted in quite a bit of criticism being levied against the show. Number 15. Picking off Cleveland A lot of death was doled out during this two-parter, or was it? In the second half of Lois Kills Stewie, Stewie violently bosses around his family with a gun. <laughs> look, look, do you like it? Yes. What do you like about it specifically? I don't know. It's just then that Cleveland waltzes through the door, telling them that he's just checking in. Whether out of surprise or anger, Stewie turns and shoots Cleveland almost immediately after he enters. The wound quickly proves fatal, and Cleveland slumps to the floor. Thankfully, the whole thing turns out to be a computer simulation experienced by Stewie. I was just running a simulation to find out exactly how killing her and taking over the world would play out for me. So, no, he never technically killed Cleveland. But as the simulation proves, he would have if given the opportunity. Which, honestly, yeah, doesn't come as that much of a shock. Number 14. Kidnapping Bart's Enemies And people think Bart Simpson is bad. The Simpsons Guy is a crossover episode between what are probably two of the most watched American animated comedies of our time. It was me. How come this convenience store has so many shadowy parts? It's pretty incredible, and the episode does a great job of contrasting the two shows' different styles of comedy. While both Bart and Stewie play the rebel roles in their respective families, this crossover shows just how different these roles are. While Bart engages in some rather harmless pranks, Stewie's mischief is… not so harmless. He ends up abducting the people who make Bart's life hell, subjecting them to traps that would make Jigsaw proud. It's all too much for Bart, who decides to call off the new friendship on account of Stewie being a total creep. So, how do you want to keep in touch? Facebook? Twitter? Late night phone calls lying on our tummies with our feet up in the air? Stewie, I don't think we can be friends. You freak me out. Number 13. Abandoning Mother Teresa Family Guy has never been afraid of making some dark jokes, and that includes an OD'd Mother Teresa. <laughs> I haven't been this scared since Mother Teresa OD'd in my car. In the episode Peter's Two Dads, Stewie makes a comment about the Catholic nun and some rather poor life choices she must have made to end up the way she does in this episode. The whole thing takes place in the backseat of the prodigy's car where, against the advice of his companion, a panicked Stewie decides to abandon the Mother Teresa in front of a hospital. We have so many questions. Number 12. Freezing a security guard in Carbonite It doesn't take long for Stewie to start acting out, as in, like, the third episode. In Chitty Chitty Deathbang, Stewie misinterprets the meaning of his first birthday and believes that he will be reinserted into Lois's womb. He failed to thwart my escape into the outside world, and now, one year hence, he's returning to rectify his mistake and... <gasps> Put me back in the womb. To escape this fate, Stewie attempts to flee Quahog via the airport. While there, he is reported as a lost child and taken in by a kind security guard named Henry. Henry talks him through the ordeal, and in exchange, Stewie freezes the kindly old man in carbonite. As the you kind sage, I only hope my heartfelt thanks will keep you warm as you spend the next ten years in frozen carbonite. <laughs> now that wasn't very nice. Number eleven. The whole thing with Jeremy. The only infraction that Jeremy committed was being the boyfriend of Stewie's crush. Stewie falls for his babysitter LaDawn and grows irate when he learns that she has a boyfriend named Jeremy. Stewie, this is Jeremy. Hey, little man. So you're the guy who's been trying to steal my girlfriend. What? You... Girlfriend? In a desperate and very misguided attempt to win her over, Stewie kidnaps Jeremy and locks him in the trunk of Brian's car. We never learn the fate of Jeremy, but he is still missing after two weeks, so it's not looking good. I'm sorry, Stewie. I'm just upset. Jeremy stopped calling me. He what? That blackguard? His fate is seemingly confirmed in the episode Coma Guy, as Peter sees Jeremy alongside other dead characters. Number 10. Creating Evil Stewie If you thought normal Stewie was bad, just wait until you hear about Evil Stewie. 
He's accidentally created in response to a playground incident, as Stewie feels that he is growing too soft. I have gone soft. I've lost my sadistic streak. So I've built a concentrated neural enhancement device designed to boost my evil side. Unfortunately, evil Stewie is far more depraved than anyone could imagine. Complete with his inversed color coordination, the counterpart goes on a rampage throughout Quahog. This includes violently killing numerous citizens, drinking the Kool-Aid man's contents, and doing some pretty horrific things to Brian. It's all too much, even for OG Stewie, who teams up with Brian in an attempt to quell his out-of-control creation. This all could have been avoided if Stewie just embraced his softer side. Hey, come on, I'll take you home. <laughs> Number 9. Bertram's End Bertram is Stewie's biological half-brother, as he was born through artificial insemination. The two have long been enemies, with Stewie even attempting to erase Bertram from existence all the way back into Season 3. As God is my witness, from this day forward, Peter and Lois shall not conceive. In the ninth season episode, The Big Bang Theory, Bertram returns the favor and tries to erase Stewie by killing his distant ancestor, Leonardo da Vinci. While he is successful in disposing of the Renaissance painter, the plan results in his own death, with Stewie using Bertram's crossbow against him. Although this show has a penchant for bringing dead characters back to life, so far, that hasn't happened with Bertram. Nope, Stewie's half-brother is truly dead and gone. So if you kill me, you're killing yourself and everything else that ever existed or will exist. Worth it! Number 8. Kidnapping Charlie as we learn from The Simpsons Guy, Stewie Griffin does not take kindly to tormentors. Well, then it dawned on me, your cruelty merely stems from some deep-seated inner pain. And so the obvious remedy is a healthy dose of outer pain! <laughs> That's quite ironic considering he's the biggest tormentor of the show. But we digress. Stewie is ecstatic when he gets a new tricycle, but his joy is quickly replaced with anger when the tricycle is stolen by a seven-year-old kid named Charlie. Once again, we see Stewie abducting and attempting to inflict great misery on another character. Charlie's just lucky Lois interrupted when she did. Others haven't been nearly as fortunate. One thing's for sure, playing house with Stewie does not make for a fun play date. What's going on down here? Oh, uh, we're playing house. The boy is all tied up. Number 7. Putting an End to New Brian Believing that Brian is getting up there in age, Peter decides to adopt a new dog. He is suitably named New Brian, and he instantly hits it off with the family. Wow, Meg and Chris, I can't decide which one of your hats I like better. <gasps> However, living in the house with his own replacement understandably upsets Brian, and he moves out. New Brian also gets on Stewie's nerves, and he dislikes the dog's constant positivity and friendly nature. Wanting the old Brian back and feeling upset about a particular transgression, Stewie decides to off New Brian. While the act itself occurs off-screen, we see Stewie disposing of the dog's remains in a garbage bag. We can only imagine what kind of horrors he levied on that poor canine. Well, the upside is, at least we have our old Brian back. From now on, buddy, you're the only animal I care about. Number 6. Beating Up Brian Stewie takes a page out of organized crime in this divisive episode from Season 4, where he becomes a bookie and takes bets on a celebrity boxing match between Mike Tyson and Carol Channing. And the winner by technical knockout weighing in at 67 pounds, Carol, put on your Sunday clothes, Channing! Yeah! Brian bets 50 bucks on Tyson, who proceeds to lose in a shocking upset. The former doesn't take Stewie seriously and refuses to pay up prompting the angry baby to take brutal action. Let's just say he's rather creative with his violence. Suffice to say, Stewie was serious, and Brian definitely learned that lesson the hard way. All right, let's go to the bank. Number 5. Watching Dr. Pritchfield Die Family Guy won huge with guest star Ian McKellen. He plays Dr. Cecil Pritchfield, a child psychologist who sits down with Stewie for therapy. It sounds like it's very important what other people think of you. Oh, is, is that what it sounds like? To me, it does, yes. 
The kind man gets Stewie to open up, and he begins to reveal deeper and more complex aspects of his character, like the fact that he actually speaks with an American accent. However, these secrets prove to be Dr. Pritchfield's downfall. He begins to experience a heart attack and asks Stewie for help, but the infant would rather Pritchfield take his secrets to the grave, so he allows him to die in agony. Here's a rare instance where we actually see Stewie guilt-ridden about something. Brian? Yeah? I did something awful. Do you want to talk about it? No. Number 4. Offing Brian's Brother Stewie is both adorable and horribly wicked, and that is on full display in Hannah Banana. The episode begins with them desperately wanting tickets to a Hannah Montana concert. Call to get your tickets now. Ah! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! But not now, because it just sold out. What? Sometimes we forget that he really is just a child. Brian refuses to help Stewie in his endeavor, but of course, the latter has some fairly effective persuasion tactics up his sleeve. He tracks down all eight of Brian's siblings and threatens to harm them if Brian doesn't comply. One explosive collar later, Brian has only seven siblings, and the Miley Cyrus fan gets his way. Ah! Oh my god! Oh my god! What, what did you do? I killed him, Brian, and he's the lucky one. He went quickly. Number three, his attempt on Olivia Fuller. Like Bertram, Stewie has shared a long rivalry with child actress Olivia Fuller. The two briefly collaborated in the episode From Method to Madness, but they eventually split owing to creative differences. Simon, would you be a dear and ask Stewie to dance on his own feet tonight? Pardon me, Simon, could you provide Olivia with a bucket so she can carry a tune? The two reconnect in Chick Cancer, and unsurprisingly, the old bickering returns and the two fall out once again. Olivia begins playing with another boy named Victor, and in a moment of intense jealousy and rage, Stewie burns the cardboard house with both Olivia and Victor inside. The episode ends without closure, leaving us to wonder about their fates. However, Olivia would appear again in season 15, proving that she survived the inferno. We're not sure about poor Victor, though. You know, the last time I saw you, you were... Burning in a cardboard yeah, house. Yeah, burning in a cardboard house, yeah. Number 2. The Home Invasion on Christmas what better way for Family Guy to celebrate the holidays than having Stewie and Brian commit a home invasion? First of all, we're not even Santa anymore. This has been a home invasion. But an hour and a half, Brian! It's got to be light in six hours, and we have to deliver to the whole rest of the world! They take on the role of Santa and break into their first house by shattering a window. Their racket quickly draws the attention of the homeowner and, to prevent him from calling the cops, Stewie beats him over the head with a baseball bat. Things only get worse from there. The baby knocks out the man's wife and duct tapes their young daughter to ensure their silence. Best of all, they were in the wrong house the whole time. We never see the family again, but considering the brutal extent of the father's injuries, it's probably safe to assume the worst. All right, that's the last of the blood. Go check on the other kid. What other kid? Johnny, the one who's getting the bat. Stewie, there's only one bedroom up here. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. His Disdain for Lois Stewie has long harbored thoughts of matricide, and he finally gets his wish in Season 6's Stewie Kills Lois. I've been all talk. So much time wasted. Well, no longer. Lois is a dead woman. I'll do to her what douchebags did to the guitar. To prove to Brian that he's not all talk, Stewie goes through with everything by shooting his mom on a cruise ship. Or at least he thinks he does. Lois was actually rescued by a reverse merman and eventually returns to Quahog to expose Stewie. While this whole thing was a simulation, the fact that Stewie was willing to rig up a scenario like this in the first place speaks volumes about his depraved and maniacal mind. I suppose I'm not ready to kill Lois or take over the world. Yet. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.